This is Elizabeth Melton, and I'm the Public Engagement Director for the Institute for Diversity and Civic Life, and I'm conducting interviews with the Luce Foundation's COVID-19 Emergency Grant Network for the Grounded Knowledge Project. We are meeting in the Fetzer Institute boardroom in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and Andrew Davis is our videographer. Today is Thursday, June 1st, 2023, and I am joined by Andy Keck. Andy, would you introduce yourself some more? Yeah, uh, I'm Andy Keck. My, uh, I work as the uh, Chief of Staff at the Perkins School of Theology at Southern Methodist University. And I'm also an ordained deacon in the United Methodist Church. So. That's wonderful. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, your relationship to the COVID-19 emergency grant and the project that you work on? Yeah, I was part of a small team that uh, ended up kind of running that. Uh, so I ended up doing a lot of the logistics as well as particularly contacting out, as we get into describing it, contacting some of the annual conferences in the Methodist Church that we were trying to partner with in, in distributing some of the funds, yeah. That's great. So what did so what did that project look like? What are some of these conferences yeah, right, you right, were right. working with? <laughs> so... Um, we, at the time, we were actually just finishing up a, another loose grant that we had that was really focused on uh, Latino, Latina studies kind of things. And so had other kinds of engagement within the Hispanic community. And so our first thought was, well, we have, we have partners that we've already been working with. Uh, people that we know, uh, one of the other people that is helping arrange this, her name was Isabel de Campo. And she was also uh, co-director of our intern program. So sometimes she'd actually placed interns, you know, at some of these kinds of places. And so we thought these, this would be an excellent place uh, to kind of get started with those. So our first impulse was let's start local and let's try to build upon some of those foundational relationships that we have. Our second thought was, you know, we actually have a lot of relationships with uh, with different, with the with, different annual conferences in United Methodist Church in the region. And so what are maybe, uh, what are some annual conferences that we have good relationships with that we'd want to kind of develop a little further through this grant program? And so we would go to a, an annual conference and would say, we want to give you $15,000 or whatever the amount was. Uh, what, what ministries do you think this would most help in your area? And so uh, we got uh, had kind of a variety of things. Sometimes it was something that the conference was directly engaged in. Sometimes it was something that the conference was supporting. Or sometimes it was something that ministers in the conference were engaged in. So anyway, it was kind of known projects that were happening in different areas. And of course, as you recall, during COVID, it was a little crazy. So <laughs> so trying to, to, to both kind of figure out what those groups were and uh, and how they could receive the money. You know that was that was part of what we did. So, um, and in some cases, annual conferences were able to kind of take that money themselves and distribute it. In other cases, it kind of went to these other agencies that were kind of related to it. So, was, yeah, that's really interesting. And I'm part of this is that I'm also just kind of curious about some of the logistics. So, um, obviously, as um, someone who works at SMU, Southern Methodist University. Right. I'm assuming that's how a lot of these relationships were developed. <clears throat> and um, also I've noticed that, so your title as chief of staff, what exactly does that designate? <laughs> because I'm unfamiliar with that in a more academic setting. Yeah, yeah. And it's actually, a, it's, a, it's a title that just came about last September. So actually after the COVID project. <laughs> Uh, but in any case, uh, for, for me, I'm essentially kind of a, um, I help the dean do his or her work. And so, um, but I'm not kind of an executive assistant in that kind of sense, but uh, I'll take on projects, let's say like a grant program. <laughs> I mean, obviously the dean in one sense is in charge of it or is the final word on, on things like that, but he actually needs someone like me <laughs> to actually execute those things. And so uh, uh, those will be kind of designated to me. Uh, and there are lots of diff different examples where I'm able to kind of do some of the work behind the scenes to get you know, projects or initiatives that uh, a dean might want to promote kind of off the ground or keep them running in some way. So, 
Sure, that makes a lot of sense and it helps kind of make a natural progression even in some ways, I would think, to some of the project work you were doing right. before right. Um, as well. Um, so again, kind of thinking back then to that time of the, of the pandemic and the emergency grant, um, can you can you describe the communities you were working with a little bit more? I know oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I would love to hear some more about that. Yeah, so uh, I think, again, within those two buckets, kind of within the first bucket of kind of Hispanic, Latinx kinds of uh, agencies, those tended to be more local uh, to kind of the, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, I think there was one in Waco that we supported, but they were mostly kind of geographically close to us. And so... Um, and it was everything from, uh, there was a, a group called uh, Breaking Bread, Breaking Borders that uh, trains refugees to do um, catering services. Uh, and so we'd actually use them several times for different things that were happening at Perkins. And so it seemed like, especially in, during COVID when there wasn't as much catering going on, because <laughs> there weren't as many events going on, that this would be a good group to kind of, how can they kind of uh, continue their, their work. And so some of it, they, they simply used to pay salaries or rent for some of their employees because, uh, and then they, I think, also use some of it as seed money for uh, doing kind of a, a meal packaging kind of thing uh, that they could then uh, could, could do. So, uh, and then there, was, there were agencies that were involved in public policy, agencies that kind of dealt with uh, kind of social services, uh, housing insecurity, food insecurity, Sometimes they were wrapped up in one agency. Sometimes they were kind of separate. Uh, I think there was one that was involved in uh, public policy around uh, immigration law kinds of things. So uh, quite quite a variety kind of in that in that first bucket. But again, they're all tended to be focused on, if not at specifically Hispanic and Latinx folks, at least marginalized in some way, uh, kind of folks that were kind of in the DFW area. Now for the for the annual conference ones, uh, that also ended up being kind of a variety. So some annual conferences, uh, I remember one one which we got a, a great video from was uh, the Indiana or Indiana. I was up at three o'clock this morning. Sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> the Indian uh, uh, missionary annual conference in Oklahoma. Mm. And so uh, they, they, they took the funds that we had and they, it was, it felt like they did almost everything they could. Like, we we're going to give out gift cards to Kroger. We're going to uh, help people with their utilities bills. We're going to, you know, uh, uh, buy and distribute uh, personal protection equipment and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it was, you know, you just have a real variety there. Um, and then I think other annual conferences, I feel like there was some similarity in that everyone was kind of dealing with people on the margins that were struggling in some way. And I think, I mean, one of the ironies, for, at least for me, was that here, here I am, an employee of SMU, and I'm getting, you know, a government check, a sim stimulus check, and SMU is getting payment protection payments. But the folks that, that were being served by these funds were excluded because they weren't citizens or they weren't able to kind of fill out the paperwork. And so, uh, you know, I think that that was one of the things uh, that really kind of hit me as we were getting those reports back. You know, we're just going to give these out as, you know, grocery gift cards or uh, help people with their utility bills or, uh, or medical bills too, you know, those kinds of things. So it just seemed like it was a, a, a wide variety. But it was kind of a, a rhyming to it too. It was like, okay, these are our basic kind of subsistence, uh, you know, flourishing kinds of things that are needed for humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really sounds like you, y'all were able to support organizations that then were able to provide really just very necessary right. resources that were needed at that time and, and very inaccessible to so many different communities. Um, from from y'all's side of things, um, what what were some of the challenges or the unexpected, um, unforeseen kind of events that would come up during this time? 
I mean, everybody was kind of responding to unexpected challenges, but what stands out to you? Well, I mean, a couple of things were internal. Uh, one was we were very excited to, to be a part of the project and to, to make a difference and give out this money. And so even deciding who we should invite, uh, you know, we had to go through kind of several rounds of like, and then how much should we, uh, because all, it seemed like, you know, because speed was of an essence, at least we thought it was, that it was a lot easier to say, we're gonna give you 5,000 rather than, why don't you apply and you can apply for however much you want like we just wanted to come out and say we're going to give you five thousand dollars and then that 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 eliminated a lot of the back and forth about kind of application and budgets and all that kind of stuff we certainly want that information but we didn't have to do it on the front end we could kind of kind of at least have them start with a number of that kind so uh narrowing that that uh that list i think was was one thing the other thing is uh smu being a, a research university uh, is used to receiving grants. It's not so used to giving grants, uh, especially to to other nonprofits. And so there is a uh, uh, a rule or a policy within SMU that any any time SMU gives a money to another nonprofit for which it receives no benefit, it has to be signed by the president of the university. And so having Having come up with these 15 or 20 different recipients, we had to send 15, <laughs> 20 letters to the president. Could you sign this, please? So we can give you know, the 5,000 or 10,000 to, to such and such agencies. So, um, and just the paperwork in terms of, so you have to get the W-9 and uh, you know, all the stuff that for universities uh, accounting to make sure they feel com comfortable writing checks to other nonprofits, so. Yeah, and systems that don't typically work quickly. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I would expect, yeah, at a time when, when time was of the essence and kind of distributing funds, I can imagine that was extraordinarily challenging. Right, right. Um, on the other end, what were some of the successes, or, or even if it was like, you know, did you find any workarounds for some of these kind of bureaucratic <laughs> challenges? Or? Well, I mean, some of the, I mean, on the SMU side, we just once we figured out how to do it, we just did it for all of them. You know, they may have all received or had the checks cut on the same day. In fact, I don't know, <laughs> rather than have to kind of run through it once and maybe get a different accountant liaison or something the next time. So, um, so that that was one thing. But I think the the other success for us, I think, well, maybe maybe two things. One one was that you know these. The folks we gave money to, uh, for us, was in some cases uh, deepening a relationship that we already had, but in some cases it was building a whole new relationship, especially for things that were happening in Oklahoma or Arkansas. Like, we didn't necessarily know what all the ministries were going on there. And it was interesting for us to hear that uh, and to know that. And you know, to my point earlier about we'd placed interns at some of the places, well, now we had a new crop of places that, you know, if we were looking to place an intern at a nonprofit, we could say, well, there's this great place, you know, ministry up in Oklahoma City, maybe you'd want to consider. So uh, I think those were, that, that was on one of the successes. But I think the other success was just, you know, when we were starting to get kind of reports back from these, uh, these agencies about what kind of impact uh, uh, the money was having, I think it, it just... Uh, I mean, that was really everything for us, just to know that we were a part of that and that, you know, I know it was through the generosity of Luce to begin that, but I think, you know, sometimes in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the granting of money, you, you're also a, a partner in that project in, a, in an interesting way. And then also, you know, we also took the opportunity, I think once or twice, to bring all the agencies together on the Zoom call and for them to hear each other's stories. And I thought, well, that was really kind of fascinating too for uh, you know, folks that were all kind of facing the same pandemic, of course, in slightly different contexts, but just the amount of uh, information and, and stories that were exchanged was really remarkable. Yeah, and I really, I, I kind of like the idea too of kind of how, how your community expanded. And I'm 
as speaking also as a, as a Texan <laughs> and thinking about like the region of Dallas right in that area, like really we're in that area, you're a lot closer to Arkansas or Oklahoma and right. like some than even some other parts of Texas, <laughs> right? So kind of having your community expand in yeah. those ways at that right. time makes a lot of sense that, right. that they are your neighbors, right? right. right. Um, so we've got a few more minutes. Um, and thinking about this um, interview as, a, as an archive, as something that will uh, exist for, for future scholars, academics, researchers, uh, do you have any advice or what, is, what would you want them to take away about this project? What is the thing um, you want future generations to know about this time and the work that you were part of? Well, um... I think one of the things that kind of comes to mind is that the, which I guess I kind of alluded to, is that the the grant process itself, I think, is is a is a rich way in some ways of building relationships because it it creates um, it creates kind of the sense of partnership. It actually creates sometimes a, even an accountability. So we're going to give you you know ten thousand dollars. But now you're accountable to us, to some degree, or to the, the collective of people that have received the grant to do what it is. And it may have been things that they had intended to do anyway. It may have been things that they had uh, thought that they should do if only we had another $10,000. And so, you know, I, I think it, it helps kind of create that, that deep network, um, which I, I think we were able to kind of honor through uh, you know gathering them together in Zoom or to, to try to collect their their stories in some different ways and so I think that's a, that's a that's a key part for me in terms of, of of working this working this kind of thing forward I think the other thing is you really just have to continue to kind of keep on this whole idea of partnership because it can kind of seem like like you're the rescuer that's you know, going to do be doing these things for uh, these agencies that are doing these things for the disadvantaged people. When it's actually you're doing, you're providing this money to do be in partnership with them, and they're providing these services to the to the people that are struggling to be in in ministry or be in common life together. So I think that those that would be one of the insights that I would have had. Yeah, as as you're speaking, it really makes me think, and I I wrote down, you know, it's kind of that developing a, a collective ethic of, of mutual responsibility <laughs> yeah. or something you know so it is it's this this coming together and and co co-moving just it's moving right, forward right, right. together um and I, I think that's really important and really beautiful um well thank you so much for oh, chatting with me today um i think that's all the time we have for okay now. that's fair <laughs> thanks